I am Dr. Vasan. I am a urologist and an andrologist. In this series, we are going to discuss patient pain points. I get a lot of patients who are normal and andrology is a science wherein there is dysfunction. That means an organ does not function effectively. It's not a disease but it's a dysfunction. Consequently, a lot of people have a difficulty in understanding why it happened to them. So, in this series, I'll take you through several instances and several of your questions which you might have, which we will try to answer. My doctor calls me or the report tells me there are various terminologies people use. It's called oligoasthenoteratospermia. What does it mean? In a semen sample, first of all, make sure that you do the testing in a very good lab, which is standardized because nowadays we believe and we follow what is called as WHO sixth manual of reporting format, which is a specific reporting format because the reports have to be comparable. And in that, we do measure what is called as the number of sperm you have, the number of moving sperm you have and the shape of the sperm because roughly it is like looking at an individual and saying look he looks handsome, he looks uh, energetic and uh, he looks vivacious so he should be intelligent, right? So you make an assessment on the basis of the external characteristics. So similarly sperm is assessed initially on the basis of external characteristics of the number of sperm you have, the moving sperm you have and the shape of the sperm. So that once you have this assessment, it gives you a green signal whether you are in the normal range, subnormal range. If you are in the subnormal range, how subnormal you are, terribly subnormal, moderately subnormal or mildly subnormal. Now. I've got a report doctor which says I'm in the subnormal range. What happens next? Now the question is, if you're in the subnormal range, essentially where is the semen produced? It is produced inside your testis. How is it produced? Because of hormonal influences. The brain secretes certain hormones, which are called FSH, LH, testosterone, estradiol, which have an effect on two cells inside the testis. The sperm is produced by what is called Sertoli cell. The shape and the characteristics of the sperm are modified by what is called Leydig cell. So these are the two cells inside your testis. So these hormonal influences play on these cells and consequent to that the sperm is being produced. Of course it also requires erection, ejaculation and so on and so forth. So essentially by looking at your hormones, we could come to a conclusion whether there is a deficiency of your hormone production or whether there is any abnormality in your hormone production. Second, so that means you require a blood test which is a simple test which we can evaluate. Second is the development of the testis. All of us are not born equal. All of our heights are not the same. Our left arm and right arm may be slightly dissimilar. Similarly, the testis size, penis size is not the same for everyone. So there could be a discrepancy in the development or your size of the testicular development may be smaller, may be inadequate. So this is assessed by a simple ultrasound or a physical examination. So on the basis of this, we would be able to classify the problem as one which is hormonal or one which is belonging to the testis. That means the site where it is produced there is some problem or after the testis where the sperm is formed it goes through a narrow tube and joins the urine passage uh, and that's what is called as a vas difference. So there could be a problem in the tube or the storage. So we call it pre-testicular that means before the testis testicular which is problem in the testis and post testicular. So we diagnose the problem as to where it is and then give you an adequate solution.
So it's very simple. If you understand male infertility is not rocket science, it is a precise science where we will be able to tell you. What happens after that is, depending on the problem, if you have a hormonal deficiency, you would be probably be started on some hormonal medications which are suitable to improve that particular hormone which you are deficient. Or if there is a testicular problem, if I can, I can't give you the size back because size is frozen for all of us at the age of 16 to 17 years because we know we can't grow internal organs in size beyond a particular time. But we can improve the functioning by giving you better blood supply and giving it more nourishment of the same cell. And similarly, post-testicular, if it means that after the production there is a problem, it could be a minor blockage, it could be an infection, it could be an ineffic inefficient discharge of the semen. So we could take care of all that by suitable medication. So just to summarize, 80% of the male fertility problems are solvable. Now the critical point is, male has to get properly tested. Once he is tested and once he understands a diagnosis, many people believe that you just give me a tablet doctor, I will try it. How does it work? If your car is not starting, I can't just give you something and say the car will start, right? I need to open the bonnet, see what is it, whether it's an engine problem, it's a battery problem, whether it's a fuel tank problem, whatever it is. Similarly, human body needs a diagnosis. So once we have a diagnosis, it becomes very precise because andrology, which encompasses male infertility and sexual dysfunction, has a science, has progressed so much that we can make a precise diagnosis and give you a precise solution. For any further information, for any further questions, please call us at Aster Andrology Department where we deal with male fertility, sexual dysfunction and healthy male aging and preventive health checks. Thank you very much. Mm -hmm.